please consider teaching this to your youth group, starting with junior high. They can digest this stuff. They have to start getting these things. We need to start teaching our kids higher thoughts, bigger ideas, and ways of identifying logical fallacies. Have you ever tried climbing a staircase with broken stairs? Hopefully not, because it's impossible. The same thing goes with climbing an argument with unsound or broken steps. It may look like it can be used safely, but once it's put into practice, it collapses. The logic is not able to hold up to scrutiny. We continue our look at logical fallacies and how to spot them. Specifically, do the arguments for evolution have sound stairs to climb? I've heard a lot of people say, well, scientists say mm -hmm. that the Earth is however millions of years old, or mm -hmm. scientists say that the universe is this many billions of years old. They right. say that, and I'm just gonna just trust them. You're not smarter than the scientists. I'm not smarter than the scientists. I'm just smarter than you because I'm listening to the scientists. Mm -hmm. What do we say to those people? <laughs> that is a fallacy. That's the, um, it's called the faulty appeal to authority. And the funny thing is it doesn't work on me because I'm a scientist. And so when yeah, like, scientists say this, I'm like, I don't say that. I'm yeah. a scientist. Yeah, yeah. When we talk about stuff or matter or life or energy, do you believe that those things are eternal or that they had a beginning point. I'll leave it up to the scientist. A lot of times people will say science says. Sure, yeah. And then it becomes a reification fallacy because science doesn't say anything. Science is a set of tools. It takes a person to say something. But a lot of times the reason people will phrase it science says is because it sounds very impressive, right? I mean, it's, it's rhetorically persuasive because we all respect science as a tool. It puts people on the moon, makes computers work, and, and so on. We respect that. We should. And I respect them if they say scientists say because they, they've at least taken a step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. But most people don't. They'll say science says because you put a face on it, all of sudden you got a person who can make mistakes. The appeal to authority is tricky because not all appeals to authority are faulty appeals to authority. Right. Um, I do have a certain degree of respect when a scientist makes a claim about something. Here's my research and I, I, I believe that this rock that we collected from the moon, it's, it's a basalt and here's my reasons for believing that. Okay, I, I would accept that. That's not a faulty appeal. A faulty appeal is when you appeal to an expert when they're commenting on something that is either outside of their area of expertise or where they have a, a noticeable bias that would cause them to draw a wrong conclusion in that area. You'll notice that evolutionists fit both of those criteria, at least in my worldview. First of all, when a scientist talks about what happened billions of years ago, he's not doing science because science is about what happens in the present. It's about studying the current operation of the universe. When you talk about what happened a long time ago, that's a history question, mm -hmm. okay? And so he's already outside of his expertise. He doesn't know what happened billions of years ago any more than anyone else. And so you shouldn't be intimidated by scientists say what happened billions of years ago. Well, they can't even predict the weather one year in advance. Mm -hmm. uh, keep that in mind. And secondly, there is, a, there is a bias there. Those scientists who believe in billions of years tend to reject the biblical worldview. And once you reject creation, you need the billions of years in order to have evolution and, and so on, in order to try and explain away the creation worldview. So that's what makes it a fallacy. There's formal fallacies. Now, formal fallacies deal with the structure of an argument. And I would say the most common formal fallacy that occurs in origins debate is the fallacy of affirming the consequent. And affirming the consequent has this form. If P, then Q, Q, therefore P. I, I find even scientists make this mistake, which is kind of interesting to me. So let's say my theory predicts, my theory P predicts Q, and I do observe Q, therefore my theory is true. Uh, although that the, the observation that your theory made a correct prediction doesn't disprove it, it doesn't prove it either, because there could be other reasons why you've observed that. If it's raining outside, then the grass will be wet. That's, that's true. And you go and you observe, well, the grass is wet. You see, therefore, it must be raining outside. Well, that doesn't necessarily follow because there could be other causes for why the grass is wet. Maybe somebody left the sprinklers on. Maybe somebody dumped a bucket of water outside. There are other explanations for that. Sometimes evolutionists will do that. and They'll say, well, evolution predicts that we would find a hierarchy in organisms, that we would find that, that it's possible to organize organisms into a taxonomic tree. Mm -hmm. Now, that's true. 
But the fact is, I as a creationist make exactly the same prediction. I would expect that because God has uh, instilled order into his creation and he's told us to have dominion over the animals. We couldn't do that. If each animal were totally unique, we couldn't classify them, we couldn't study them. And so God has organized uh, organisms into a, a taxonomy. Cars can be organized into a taxonomy. That doesn't mean that they evolved from a common ancestor over millions of years. No, it means that they have a common designer, the fallacies, they are everywhere. You have just heard one, four, how am I bad at math? One, four, and five from Road Trip to Truth. However, there are more, and I would like to encourage you to consider getting this resource at wretched.org slash roadtrip and showing this to your kids in youth group. There's a study guide that will walk you right through it, and I'm telling you, you are going to get into conversations with your kids. You didn't know they were thinking the thoughts that they got going on in their noggins. Um, Houston, I think we have a few problems here. Go ahead, Richard One. Besides the fact I'm wearing a cardboard helmet, Houston, you have got one of the biggest false teachers in the universe. Are you kidding? He is so rich. Uh, how rich is he, wretched one? I can see his house from here.